friends we talk about vasudeva kutumbakam therefore we have been saying this expressing this in a prayer sarve trasugina santu sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashya dukham apniya this is to be said every day as a prayer or somewhere we have to put it into practice when you have to put it into practice it becomes religion you understand this and when you have to put it into practice you have to act locally we talk about vasudeva kutumbakam vasudha vasudeva kutumbakam it means world as a one family is there any village in this country which can be considered as a family now tell me we simply go on talking about vasudeva kutumbakam sarvaitra sukhina santu when you try to make your at least your mother a happy woman at the time of her departure from this world apni maa bhi dukhi hai at the time of her departure from this world and you are still saying the same thing because they are in sanskrit sanskrit is the language of gods therefore you are saying something holy somewhere as swami vivekananda used to say ounce of practice is far far better than tons of your lectures tons of your precepts so religion is a matter of practice and scholars have found when <coughs> there were philosophers of religion in the west i have forgotten now his name when we opted for philosophy of religion course his young friend started laughing at him what a stupid fellow this fellow is he is studying philosophy of religion in this age of science and technology and he found that it is very difficult to define the word religion itself then will come the term hinduism religion itself is very difficult to define the word religion as narayan sir had pointed out that religion and religion and all these things but it is very difficult especially the word religion has come from the west especially from semitic religions semitic religions are judaism christianity and islam because they were the religions developed by the followers of the race called semite semite is the name of race and the followers of this race were develop the concept of religion now the same really concept is not wholly applicable to hinduism but in spite of all this conventionally or what our forefathers will say rudharth technically it is called rudharth it is now a rudi a convention to say that hinduism is a religion so what is a religion this self is a problem and people found that can we say that those who believe in god and try to live by that faith is a kind of religion no because buddhism is a godless religion in that sense jainism is a godless religion then we have confucianism and laos say godless religions so in what sense so it is very difficult so philosophers ninian smart now i remember his name ninian smart he said that we can discuss religion from the standpoint of dimensions of religion each religion has six dimensions so religion as i said in the morning is a multi dimensional phenomenon religions are not founded by deliberate they are not founded by or established by the men of wealth the men of power the men of scholarship and two persons as i read in the morning akbar tried to create religion and that religion disappeared with his departure from this world there was another man august comte in 19th century first half of 19th century he tried to establish a religion of humanism somebody here in the name of hinduism went on speaking on humanism i think that gentleman spoke on hindu humanism he was a humanist this is religions have become dogmatic religions have become very narrow minded religions are creating problems why not have humanity itself as a kind of goddess and science and technology technology can give us the means to worship this goddess in the sense of service of humanity 
religion also talks about service of humanity as we have seen in the morning in the name of we may say religious charity charitable acts they are to be done in regard to humanity and humanity is manifested in the form of human beings so we can have a religion of this type where our goddess will be humanity itself august kom who coined the term sociology he was a great thinker and but unfortunately also that religion also did not exist why religions are to be traced to the spiritual or mystical experiences of all them rushis sages seers or prophets or godmen take any one say for example abraham who is supposed to be the founder of judaism yahudi dharma he had his own experiences of those days spiritual experiences somebody refer to william james william james has refined religion as cosmic patriotism religion transcends nationalism transcends nationality it is a kind of cosmic patriotism so truly religious man whether he is a hindu or a christian or a muslim truly religious not dogmatic and who is not afraid of this with the traditional priest and traditional authorities he is a genuinely religious man he transcends we may say this dogmatic boundaries of your religion so he is a man of the universe therefore cosmic patriotism just as we have this universal prayer in the form of pasaidan it is a universal prayer duritan ji timir jao not necessarily the hindu duris or muslim duris there are duris in every community in so far as hinduism is concerned there are duris in every caste har ek caste mein durjan hai har ek dharm mein religion hai ए दुर्जन है हर एक कम्युनिटी में दुर्जन है अंडरस्टूड इन दिस सेंस यू विल फाइंड दैट दिस सेंस आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द यू हैव टू रिमूव द दुर्जनता ऑफ द दुर्जन नॉट सेरनेल गो ऑन किलिंग देम एंड इट ओके देम व्हेन कम कम व्हेन दे विल हैव टू गो फॉरवर्ड एंड डील विद देम स्टर्नली आल्सो जस्ट एज दिस वी कैन फाइंड इन द लाइव्स ऑफ श्री कृष्ण और राम we have been talking about we have never crossed the boundaries of india ram was the first to cross the boundaries of india and he went to selur <laughs> you forget this so far as ramayan is concerned ram went all the way to the boundary of india and crossed the ocean by bridging the gap by establishing a kind of bridge between selur and india ye to sach hai ki nahi so ram was the first to cross the ocean and to deal with ravan and ravan was by caste a brahmin ravan ram was by caste a kshatri of those days you know that this shows they are demons can be born even the brahmin community and sages can be born even the asur community for example prahlad was an asur he belonged to the race of the demons hiranyakashipu was asur he was born as a and he is supposed to be the ideal uh, bhakta and he was an ideal bhakta when he he was to be crushed to be killed by his own father and he was not prepared to obey his father he we may say leniently said father you and i have a father we and i have a mother cosmic mother or cosmic father therefore we owe a lot to him not to that god and fortunately in order to protect this saint namay bhakta pranashyate according to this assurance hiranyakashipu appeared on the scene and sorry is uh, nushiva appeared on the scene and he was dealt with after finishing him nushiva uh, this uh, god in human form or this human animal form we may say lion god something like this he said prahlad i am very happy with your bhakti ask for any boon surprisingly at that time prahlad said i am not a vanik these are the words used in bhagavat urush bhai these are the words used in bhagavat prahlad this prahlad said dear father dear cosmic father i am not a vanik 
I am not a trader. I am not my businessman. Bhakti is not my business. Bhakti is not my occupation. Bhakti is not my profession. Bhakti is my vocation in which I am interested and I was interested in experiencing you. This is experiential dynamics. Call it mystical, call it spiritual, call it religious. So at the root of all these religions, especially 11 religions of the world, what is the source of all these? Mystical experience or religious experience, dharmanubhuti. It is this dharmanubhuti which compels them to speak out the truth in spite of so much pressure from outside. The forces are against them. Forces were against Jesus Christ and still he spoke the truth. Forces were against Socrates. Still he never hesitated from this. I have been telling you this. Gandhiji was the first man in 1904 who wrote six articles in English in, in that paper. I don't remember the name of that paper now, which was published from Indian Opinion. The name of the paper weekly was Indian Opinion, published from North, uh, this which one? Dakshin Africa. He was the editor. Out of these six, one article was written in Gujarati. And that was Life of Socrates was described by me. And he said that Socrates is the soldier of truth. Socrates was described as soldier of truth. This was done by Gandhiji. In 1904, how many people know this? <clears throat> we don't know. So how this, gun, this man was inspired by men like Socrates, Gandhi, our sages, our saints, our, uh, who is that Gujarati saint? Vaishnava Janto, Tene Kaye, Narsi Mehta and other saints. When he was in Eroda jail, he had started studying Saint Tukaram, Gandhiji. A very strange man. When you will be jailed, suppose, fortunately, unfortunately, we are jailed, what will you do? One of the definitions of religion given by Whitehead is, religion is what you do with your solitariness. When you are alone, what do you do? How do you manage to live? That is your religion. And this definition is given by Whitehead, who was a great mathematical physicist. He was not a professor of religion. Or he was not a bishop, he was not a priest, he was a founder of modern mathematical logic along with Bertrand Russell. Such a great man. After retirement, this retirement age was given by Britishers to us and to Britishers there at the age of 60 he retired as a professor of mathematical physics. And at the age of 63, he was invited to join Harvard University as a professor of philosophy. This has never happened in the history of the world. Professor of mathematical physics was invited by Harvard University to join the university as a professor of philosophy. So this man has defined the word religion as what you do with solitariness. Second definition I refer to in the morning that was also given by Whitehead by religion. Religion is theory and practice of inner life. See, we have been discussing the rituals. And rituals are, we may say, expressions of, of our inner life or sometimes mere expressions in the form of outer behavior so that others can, others can identify us as religious. We go to religion on particular days. Our neighbors must feel that we are also religious. Many times this happens. We do all this for the sake of establishing our identity in society. To some extent it is alright. But that must be the minimum aspect. So the first dimension of religion is experience. Experiential dimension. Mystical experience, call it spiritual experience or religious experience. Then second dimension will be on the basis of this. They develop the doctrinal dimension of religion. Doctrines. For example, you have been referring to Swami Vivekanandji. He said that there are two aspects of religion. One eternal, one changing. Ephemeral, transitory. What is the eternal aspect? That there is supreme soul or supreme self or God 
and we are fragments of that God. This is eternal. There is no change in this, the change in it. Whether your Hinduism is Vedic, Vedantic, or Epic, Hinduism then Pauranic, and then popular Hinduism. Popular Hinduism, Hinduism as it is practiced today. We are all followers of popular religion, whatever it may be. Whether it is there in the books, as he pointed out that Guru Shanti. Guru Shanti means it is the duty of a priest to go to the man who has built a new house, to, as he pointed out, to transform it into a home. Home is where the heart is. That is home. It is not a house. Whether built in this western style or Indian style or this style or that style. And in order to make transform it into home, you have to give them certain thoughts which will be acceptable to them. Answer their questions. You understand that? You have to live like brothers and sisters and belonging to the same stock, the parents. You have to respect the parents, respect the old people and so on. If you go on discussing all things with, we may say, the members of the family who belong to two or three generations, there is bound to be some effect on this. And if you do this selflessly, I am sure that they are not going to allow you to go without feeding you or without giving you something. But unfortunately, this is not done. And there is a fear. If you don't perform this puja at the hands of this priest, and then God will be angry. As if God is looking at you. Shani Maharaj, God be nahi. Shani will be angry or Mangal will be angry. And we have started the building the temples in honor of Mangal, Mars, in honor of Shani. This is very unfortunate. Who is inspiring them to do this? This cannot be done by the so-called Shudras. Even the Vaishyas cannot do this because they have no idea of all these things. So this, by doing this, you are trying to create fear in the minds of the people. So the most tragic thing is Hindu minds become weak. Swamiji was not merely a booky scholar of Hinduism. Swami Vivekananda. He moved from Calcutta, walked, got any vehicle and sometimes, many times walked, sat with the people, sat with the sweepers, sometimes smoked with the sweepers, all these things he did and kept on moving. Discussed with the Rajas, Maharajas, went up to this. On the way, he studied Panini. He was so brilliant that if he could study Panini on his own or with the help of some scholars somewhere. There was one Pandit in Porbandar from Maharashtra. From him, he learned many things regarding Panini. The point is, when he was moving, he was mixing with the people, mixing with the, we may say, Rajas, Maharajas and the scholars, discussing religion with them and saw the plight of humanity. And he saw two things. Extreme, we may say, ignorance regarding religion and horrible poverty also. India was invaded several times by outsiders, not because India was a poor country, because India was a rich country in those days. All this belongs to, we may say, pre-Christian era. Therefore, as Dipesh Bhai pointed out, we have highly developed culture in those days. We don't know everything about all these things because everything is not written. As he rightly pointed out, Everything was orally transmitted and oral transmission has its own limits. It was not written so but nobody knows. We had no historical sense also. Who was the first to write the history of Maharashtra? Hamnani Likayo. Grand Duff was the first to write the history of Maharashtra. He collected material. How could it? Today we cannot read write an article of two pages consistently. Though there are so many books available in the libraries. In those days, how could he write a history of Maharashtra? How could he collect the material? The collector letters collect so many Jahir Namas, so many Jagir Dars he had to meet and so on. He might have committed mistakes, but 
we have developed the sense of history because of these people then lokhitwadi another man from our country who tried to write the history of this country we had no historical sense we have no time sense at all we have been changing therefore i have, I have given you the names of hinduism vedic vedantic epic puranic then popular hinduism and there are so many idiosyncrasies in popular hinduism because nobody knows our ritualist guru is our guide who knows nothing as i ask a simple question in the morning how many if there are 1 lakh people who are supposed to be our gurus from the traditional point of view varna nam brahmano guru how many of them know the vedas the contents of the vedas within one month you can become a religious priest one month this we have seen in tatvadan with that also such age groups came out of this there was a course for them i used to call them new brahmins what happened to them i don't know now because since i have no contact with them the point is suppose he is urvish urvish bhai suppose he belongs to that caste also suppose I, i go along with him for a month i can be a priest ye ganpati hai lal phool leke aao ek nariyal leke aao pede ka box leke aao 5 50 rupaye ke paisa yahan rakho pani leke aao बैठो इधर दो चार श्लोक में बोल दिया वक्त महाकाय सूर्य कोटि समप्रभु निर्विघ्नम गुरु में देव सर्व कार्य सर्वदा बस ऐसे दो चार बार उल्टा सुल्टा बोल दिया वो समझ देगा अरे भाई ही इज सेइंग समथिंग विच इज वैदिक आयुर्वेदिक रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम हेवनली गॉड्स एंड सो ऑन देन पानी लाओ इधर क्योंकि सामने वाला रिचुअल में सो जाता है इसलिए आपको पानी लगाओ बीच बीच में बोलने का <laughs> समझ में आ रहा है क्या है क्या उसमें दूसरा क्या रखा हुआ है भाई दिस इज द ट्रबल विथ रिलीजन दैट वी हैव आइडेंटिफाइड रिलीजन विथ दिस वन सो व्हाट इज द सेकंड डायमेंशन डॉक्ट्रिनल डायमेंशन ऑफ रिलीजन हिंदू डॉक्ट्रिन देयर आर सम डॉक्ट्रिन्स हाउ मेनी ऑफ अस नो पीपल डोंट नो but people never ask this question they had no courage to do this they never feel that we can ask this question therefore in the morning i said swami in this tukaram maharaj is the great repulsant of from maharashtra who said vedansa to artha amma si sateva i don't think he had seen the vedas in those days vedas were not in published form vedo ka artha mai hum jante hai mai nahi kaha un hum ka artha sense what is the basis of vedas or the upanishads realization of the ultimate reality it is we who know this he said this and we are the fragments of the same divine this is the eternal message of hinduism and we saints have we may say uh, we, we have been following this path दो ही हैड नॉट सीन द वेदास लास्ट में वो कहते हैं पहावे पुरानी नाथा चाहिए पुराना नॉट पब्लिकली अवेलेबल दे वेर नॉट इन रिटर्न फॉर्म दिस इज वॉज द वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट पार्ट ऑफ इट वी फर्गेट द सीक्वेंस श्रुति स्मृति एंड पुराण आज हमारा गुरु बापा क्या कहता है श्रुति स्मृति पुराणोक्त कर्म आम करीश है nobody knows what is shruti what is smriti and what is puran to some extent some stories are received from them from the some kathakars this is again very strange so second thing is doctrinal dimensions our doctrine says we are the heirs of divine heritage as so many have pointed out amrutasya putra we are the sons and daughters of the immortal being so how can i we we may say condemn ourselves don't condemn yourself whatever may be the social situation in which you are from you are a heir to divine heritage this is our doctrine and that is not peculiar to particular group punishable if they are committing these things going against the rule just receiving the payment and not doing their duties but this cannot normally happen in regard to those who belong to the lower strata of society 
this happens in the in the lives of the higher echelons of the society even our prime minister is facing this problem he had to he had to we may say issue a kind of whip shabd hi dekho kya hai whip chabuk dikhana padta hai bail ko aapko malum nahi i belong to a farmers family that i know what is whip is whip nikalna padta hai ki tumhara you have to attend you you are receiving the payment for attending the parliament you just come sign and go away because how many people are present in the parliament out of 542 people that means those who belong to the higher strata of society in any institution they are work shirkers wo kaam chor hai society is the principal what is the principal doing his duty honestly it's a question ha yesterday one minister said i will on on fridays i come to pune i get up in the morning early in the morning and i go to that particular available there at 7 am the minister says i come there at about 7 am come it is your duty if you don't want to come in the morning then and the people who are occupying high po higher posts but are they doing their duties honestly why do the bank go bankrupt the question one of the greatest banks in in gujarat maharashtra or in india we may say what was that that when bankrupt some year 10 15 years back or 20 years back it was supposed to be the greatest cooperative bank in india can you blame the pions can you blame the ordinary clerks for this kaun si bank thi wo nahi nahi bharat bolta kara kapol aur dusri ek bank thi india asia mein sabse badi cooperative bank thi ऐसी कपूर जैसी कुछ थी वट एवर इट मैं हु इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल दैट इज शुड यू ब्लेम दूस डायरेक्टर्स दे डोंट डू देयर ड्यूटीज ऑकेजनली दे टेक भत्ता एंड साइन एंड गो अवे यू लुक आफ्टर द बैंक प्रॉपरली हाउ कैन यू बिकम बैंक इफ यू इफ दैंक 